In this video, I'm going to go over the coding solutions for the coding problems in CS 140 for the second midterm. On the final, you can expect uh, some questions having to do with uh, pointer issues uh, that arise with lists and maps. And you may have to be able to also traverse a list or a map. So those are the things that you really want to take away here, but also going to point out a couple things with efficiency issues that are also uh, important, especially as you go ahead into 302 and other courses in the curriculum. So the first question asks you to update a user's uh, balance if they were already in a list, and if not, to create a new uh, balance for that user. So for example, if you're given Charlie, Nancy, this set of input right here, then Charlie is new to the list, so you would simply create uh, Charlie and give him a balance of 20. Nancy's not on the list, so you'd give Nancy a balance of 10. Anne's not on the list, so you'd give Anne a balance of 25 and a half. However, here, Anne's already on the list, so you'd update Anne's balance by 15. So you'd add 15 to 25 and a half to get 40 and a half. Zach's not on the list, so you'd add Zach. And finally, Nancy's already on the list. You'd add 25, 15 to 35, or to 10 to get 35, 15. The other thing is that the uh, list should be kept in sorted order alphabetically by name, as you can see right here. So your code has essentially one, there were three cases you had to consider here. So let me enumerate them. So the first case is that the user is in the list. So the, in that case, you update balance. Okay, the second thing is that the user is not in the list. And there's two cases. A, the user is inserted in the middle of the list. and B, the user is inserted at the end of the list. And this is one case that many of you forgot about. So before you even solve a problem, I always advocate that you be able to solve it on paper first. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take some of the sample input and show you how you would have handled it. So the first one was that you had Charlie 20. So the list at this point is empty. So what you want, whoops, don't want Zoom. It's an empty list. So the user goes at the end. So you'd put Charlie in and Charlie would have a balance of 20. And you insert in this case before, or you just say insert at the back, okay? So the next one was Nancy. And again, um, Nancy goes at the end. So you would try to, you would actually iterate through this list and you would not find Nancy. So Nancy has to go at the end because Nancy is after Charlie. So now we'd have Nancy, and I believe she has a balance of 10. So next we have Ann, and she is 25 and a half. So here a lot of you did something inefficient. You searched through the entire list and you didn't find Ann. But there was no reason to search through the entire list because it's in sorted order. As soon as you found the first 
name greater than Anne, in this case Charlie, there was no possibility that Anne could be on the list because all the remaining names were greater than Charlie, and hence greater than Anne. So you need to take advantage of this kind of information when you are writing programs because we want them to be as efficient as possible. So searching the entire list is a waste of time when you already know that the user cannot be in the list. Similarly, some of you made two traversals through the list. You first went through the list and found that Anne wasn't there, and then you made a second traversal starting again at the beginning to see that where to put Anne. Again, that's inefficient because you only needed one traversal. As soon as you reach Charlie, you know that Anne goes before Charlie, and so you can put Anne before Charlie. So here's Anne. Anne 2515. Okay, our next thing is to um, we have Anne in 15. And we immediately find Anne, and we can update Anne to be 4015. So we go ahead and do that. Okay, now we encounter Zach in 75. So we search through this list, and in this case, we get all the way to the end. And Zach's not there, so we insert Zach at the end. Okay, and finally, Nancy is our last one with 2515. And we search through it, and we find Nancy, and we update her amount to be uh, 3515. Now I'm going to do one more just to illustrate again the idea that you stop as soon as someone can't be in the list. So let's say we want to insert Margle or find Margle with a balance of five. When we get to Nancy, we know that Margle can't be in the list because it's in alphabetical order. Everything greater than Nancy or everything after Nancy is greater than Nancy. So Margot's got to be less than everything. Not only that, at this point we have a pointer to the object we want to insert before, so we'd simply insert Margot right here. Okay, so let's go and take a look then at the solution code. And... So... An important thing, we got a user list, their name, and their amount. Notice that we have to declare user list as a reference uh, parameter because we're going to modify it. But we should also declare name as a reference parameter because it's an object. And because it won't be changed, we should also declare it as comp. So many of you forgot to pass objects by reference. You have to get into the habit of passing stuff uh, objects by reference. There's no reason to pass integers by reference. In fact, it's a waste of time because numbers and pointers take up the same amount of space, but going through a pointer to get a value is slower than going uh, to that to the number itself. So you should not pass numbers by reference unless you have plans to modify them. Okay, so then we declared a iterator to iterate through the list. And because we're going to possibly modify the list, we don't declare the iterator as const. And we may have to create a new user, but we don't create a new user immediately. We're going to wait because it's possible the user is already in the list, in which case creating a new user is a waste of time and possibly a memory leak if we forget to delete that user. So we're going to hold off on creating a new user unless we find it's necessary. So here's our code for iterating 
through the list, and we're going to iterate through the entire list if we have to. But again, if we find the user, we can return early. So this is the first case. We find the user, and in that case, we simply update the balance and we immediately return. There's no reason to continue in this function at this point. We've found the user. The user can't be on the list more than uh, once. So we've done what we set out to do. We updated their balance. Time to return, not waste any more time here. Otherwise, we check to see if the name that we're looking for is less than the name at the current node. If it is, we know the name can't be in the list because as I showed you in that diagram, all the remaining names in the list are greater than the name at the current node because the list is in alphabetical order. So at this point, we might as well break out of the loop because there's no reason to continue. We can't find the name in this list. Not only that, but conveniently lit points to the node that we should be inserting before. So now, if we get to this point where we're out of the loop, the only possibility is we did not find the user in the list. And why is that? Because if we found the user, we returned. So the only way we get to this point is if we either broke out of the list or loop early, or we reach the end of the loop. In either case, we know that the user was not in the list, so we create a new user now, and we need to insert into the list. Now, you'll notice that I insert before lit, and you may say, wait a minute, what if you got to the end of the list? Well, no problem. In that case, lit points to the Sentinel node, and insert inserts the new node before whatever the iterator points to. So since in this case where the user should go at the end of the list, lit is pointing to the Sentinel node, it's good. We simply insert and the user is inserted at the end of the list. Similarly, if we broke out early, lit points to the first item in the list, that name was less than, and that's exactly where we want to insert the new user. So, in both cases, lit points to the node that we want to insert before. So, this is a very simple, elegant solution. Now, one thing I did want to point out is that how you access things. So, right here, I'm going to actually go now to here. So, when lit returns, lit points to a node. To get the node's value, use the dereferencing operator. Many of you thought, okay, it points to the node so I can get I can just say lit name. This does not work, okay? Okay, lit is not a pointer. Okay, I know we say it points to a note, but it's actually not a pointer. It's an object. So what you have to first do is dereference it to get the value. And the value is a user star or a, a pointer. So what you have to do in order to get to name is you first say star lit and that's going to get you a pointer to a user. Now you can say arrow name in order to get the name. So this is important and I can almost guarantee you on the final that I will have some interactions with lists and maps where you have to correctly write the expression to get access to a value because it's important that you understand how to correctly access 
the fields of objects that are pointed to by pointers and how to do that when those objects are stored in a list or a map. Okay, so let's move on to our second problem from the second midterm, and that was the reservation example where you wanted to insert some reservations and you were given um, the room number and then the check-in date and the check-out date. So the, if the reservation succeeds, then with that room, you want to have the pairs of guests and room um, dates that they're there. So for example, in room two, you see that Rabbit is staying on the 10th and the 11th. You see that Hound is staying on the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, up through the 5th. Now, we don't count the checkout day as a day that they are staying. Now, when we try to insert Hen, Hen would start on a unoccupied day. As you can see here, no one is in room two on day seven, eight, or nine. But Hen also wants to stay in the room on day 10. And on day 10, Rabbit is in the room, so we need to reject the reservation. Similarly, Chicken wants to go into the room on the first, but the problem is the room is already occupied on the first, so we're going to also reject chicken's reservation. So it's an all or nothing proposition. The room has to be completely unoccupied for all dates in order for the person to get the reservation. Also, if we here had said that Hen wanted to go from the 7th to the 10th, it would have been okay because Hen is checking out on the 10th and the Instructions for the problem said that the room is not considered to be, the reservation or the guest is not considered to be occupying the room on the checkout date. Here it was, the guest will not be considered to be staying in the room on the checkout date. So if the reservation here had been 7 to 10, we would have accepted it. So I gave you a data structure where you had a map and the keys represented rooms like one two three four five and then with each room there is a pointer to a map that and that map is storing these day guest pairs and it's keeping them in sorted order so i call this an occupancy map for the room now we gave you this function, you weren't expected to call it. It simply uh, would presumably have been called in advance to create all the necessary rooms. So what you should be thinking of here is that, again, think of how the map looks. So the map is something like, it's keyed on something like the key. So the, it's keyed on key, so like one, two, three, four, the room numbers, and then each value, so that's the key, each value is actually a pointer to a map where you have these, okay, so what you have is a map with your date and guest pairs. And each of them is a pointer to such a map. Okay, the second thing you have to remember is that when you get back a map iter, it is essentially a pointer. So if I have a map iter, I'm just going to abbreviate it map iter met. When you get it back, it is a pointer in effect. So to get the key, it's mit first. That gives you the key. To get the value, it's mit arrow second. 
get, gives you a value, which in this case is a map star. So if you want to get something, this right here, mit second, is giving you a map star. So if you want to get a function from that map, you are going to have to say mit second. And then if you want to do, for example, a find or a lower bound, it has to be an arrow. Right here, it has to be an arrow because what you have here is a map star. So you need an arrow to get to any function associated with it. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we are given a reservation. It has a room number. So the first thing we have to do is search our reservations map. So the first thing is, is the key, is the room, in the reservations map. And you're to throw a string if it's not. So the first thing you do is you're looking to find a key here. The second thing you need to do is, is the room occupied? Okay, and in order to solve that, you have to look in the room's occupancy map. And I gave you a trick with, or a function called lower bound that you were supposed to use to check to see if the reservation overlapped with an existing person. So what I wanted you to figure out was that, let's say that, so I gave you some examples and I'll give you some examples here. Let's say that what you have is um, in the reservation. Well, actually, let's just go back and take a look here at what we have. So when we try to insert hen, Hen wants to be from the 7th to the 10th, checking out on the 11th. So we ask for the lower bound, and we give it the key 7, which is the checkout date. And lower bound returns the first key that is equal to or greater than 7. So it's a lower bound on 7. In this case, it returns 10 because that is the first key that is greater than or equal to 7. You don't have to look at whether the room is occupied on the 7th, the 8th, or the 9th. All you care about is, is this date that returned going to be greater than or equal to your checkout date? So if it is less than your checkout date, it means that someone is in the room during the days that you want to be there. If this day right here is greater than or equal to the checkout date, it means that no one is in the room during that time, that the first time a person is in the room is on or after your checkout date. So all you needed was one comparison to determine whether or not someone was occupying that room while you want to stay in that room. It doesn't require that you check every date like some of you did. It requires only that you check the first date that the room is occupied after your check-in date, on or after your check-in date. The only other thing you have to be careful about is that there is no key. Like if I, in in the room because I've gotten the farthest out reservation. So for example, if Chicken here had asked for a reservation starting on the 15th, there is no key 
that is 15 or greater. In this case, lower bound returns the Sentinel node, or actually it returns, yes, it returns the Sentinel node for the map. So that's the other situation you have to be aware of. So that was situation two, where you are searching to see if the room is occupied. And again, if it was occupied, you threw a string. Otherwise, you um, populate it, the room occupancy map, with date guest pairs for each date in the guest reservation. Okay, so coming back to our problem, I will now look go through the solution. So I kept a actual pointer to the appropriate room occupancy map because I found it easier to deal with a direct pointer. We also had to have an iterator to the reservation one because this is what's going to get returned when we try to find the room key. And this is going to be an iterator into the room occupancy map. So the first thing I ask is, does the room exist? And I do a find, and notice that I store the resulting iterator. So I call find, and the first thing I do is I check to see if it's equal to the Sentinel node. Because if it's the Sentinel node, I did not find the room in the reservations, though I want to throw a string, no such room. And remember, you have to throw a C++ string, so here I cast the string I was throwing to a string. The next thing I do is if I did, if I get to this point, then I know that the room exists and I want to get a pointer to the room occupancy map. And remember that the way you do that is by accessing the second field and notice the arrow here because you have to use an arrow to get to the second element of the pair. And that gives me a pointer to the room occupancy map. Now many of you did a second find here. You call, you said room occupancy equals reservations.find room arrow second. And the problem with that is that these calls to find aren't cheap. They cost you order login time. So you don't want to call find more than once. Again, we're very concerned about efficiency. So to avoid multiple calls, if the key is the same, save the result like I did so that you only make one call. Those order login calls, they add up and they slow down your program. So don't make unnecessary calls. So now that I have a pointer to the room occupancy map, I call its lower bound. And notice I've used an arrow here because I have a pointer to the map. Okay, what we got back is a pointer to a map, not the map itself. So I had to use an arrow here to call the lower bound function and I called it with check-in date. And again, I saved the result because I don't want to make two calls to lower bound. I'm going to have to make two checks down here with the room editor. The first is to see whether I reach whether it returned, lower bound returned a sentinel node indicating that there is no key greater than or equal to the check end date. In that case it's good, or um, if it's if it's equal to the sentinel node, we know the room's not occupied. But what we're trying to figure out is is the room occupied? So one condition for the room being occupied is that that lower bound actually returned a, a node with an existing key. So 
if the room is unoccupied, one possibility is that we got the Sentinel node. So we have to reject that case. The second thing is not only for the room to be occupied, not only must lower bound not return the Sentinel node, if it has not returned the Sentinel node, then we also check to see whether that date is less than the checkout date. If it is, then the room is occupied on one of the days that we want to be in the room. And so we throw the string room occupied. Now notice here I have access first. And that's because first is the key with the date. So room iter is a um, pointer to a map that has a date and guest. And I here I want the day. And with iters, you map iters, you always use an arrow to get the first and second fields from the pair. So that's why we used room iter first. Okay, some of you made two calls to lower bound here. Again, those calls aren't cheap. They're order log n. That's why I saved the return result here, and then I had it available. Okay, so that took care of the case where the room was occupied. Again, we've thrown out of our function, so we only get to this point in the function if the room, if the room was found and the room is not occupied. So we get to this point in the code, we know that the reservation is good, so we iterate from the check-in date to the date less than the check-out date because the room is not considered, the guest is not considered to be staying in the room on the check-out date. So it's date less than checkout date. And I used an associative map here. Most of you did not, and that was fine. In order to use it as an associative map, I had to get reservations room, and that returns a... So reservations room, let me go through what's going on here. So let's go to the notebook. So what I had was reservations room whoops, make sure I get this right. It was all in this, okay, so that wasn't quite right. So it's reservations, room, then guest equals date. Okay, let's just verify that that is what I had here. So you can see the parentheses around this reservations room, then date equal guest. So I got it backwards, so we need to fix that. Yep, the key is not guest, the key is date. So we need to fix that. So we're staying there on that date, the guest. So what am I doing here? So what I'm doing is I'm first getting reservations room. It's treating it reservations as an associative map. That returns a map star. It returns an int string, so the room occupancy map, and that is a pointer. So in order then to treat this room occupancy map as a as an associative map, I have to dereference it. So the dereference right here turns it into a map int string that I can use then to as a 
um, associative array to do date. But what I cannot do is say reservations room date here, which is what some of you tried. That won't work because you can't, if you have a pointer to a map, if you have a map star, so then you can say it's a map star M, you, then you cannot say map, I'm sorry, M date, because that is not, this doesn't work because you can't use this operator with a pointer, okay? It's not, what happens is the brackets are overloaded for a map. Okay, that operator is overloaded. This operator is overloaded for a map. It is not overloaded for a map star. So when you try to say M uh, brackets here and M is a pointer to a map, the compiler will give you a syntax error. Okay, now that's not how most of you did it, and that was fine. So another way to do it is to say room occupancy insert. So again, room occupancy is a pointer to my map, my room occupancy map. So I call insert and again using the arrow and now I just make a pair with date and guest and that is the safe way to do it and works just fine. Now again on the final I am going to give you declarations like this where you have a map that consists of a key and a value that's a pointer to something else. And I'm going to expect you to be able to successfully navigate through the pointers and give me the correct syntax for doing it to get the appropriate value out of an object because that's an important thing to be able to do. And I didn't take off um, Often I took off no points for you not getting it exactly right on the midterm. For example, many of you would say things like reservation iter, and instead of using a arrow, you would use a period here. Or you would uh, say reservations and you'd use an arrow here. You have to be comfortable with getting your dots and arrows correct. And so I guarantee you that there'll be a couple questions or a multi-part question on the final where you have to get the arrows and the dots correct and you'll be working with maps and lists and they'll, your value fields will be pointers and I'll want you to get it correct because it's something you gotta get down. Okay, so that does it. Hopefully um, you have a better understanding of how uh, to do the two questions on the uh, midterm coding exam and also uh, a better idea of some of the types of questions that I might ask you on the final uh, with regards to them.